Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mr. Clerk, would you please take roll call? Dave Abdallah. Here. Bill Bazzi. Here. Robert Constant. Here. Lisa Hicks Clayton is absent. Denise Milanowski Maxwell. Here. Ray Muscat. Here. Tom Wenzel. Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Okay. The doctor was going to say Okay. First item on the agenda is agenda approval. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that the agenda for uh, tonight's meeting uh, be approved for the November 26, 2019 meeting uh, as presented be approved. Support. Support by Councilman Abdullah. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Vazzi. Uh, I'll be voting against uh, this agenda because of the item we talked about, the moratorium. Okay. Any further discussion? Council Chair. Councilman Wenzel. Is it possible to take 11A off of the agenda tonight? Um, well, when we got to 11A, I was just going to make the announcement that it's really not necessary anymore because the applications have already been sent out, but we're just going through the motions. You can, we'll just vote it down at that point. <clears throat> okay. Instead of, it's easier for them to keep records in the clerk's office. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Council okay. Chair. Council Muskett. Before we continue. Uh, I'd like to make it aware that, you know, there was a police officer that was just killed uh, and I was hoping that we did a, a minute of silence for the fallen officer uh, and their family. Worked at the Richard Young Center. Okay, any other comments? I might just, uh, if I might, uh, Madam Chair, the officer in Detroit has a link to Dearborn Heights, and so it really is like uh, we lost a good friend in the city, and a lot of people may not be aware of, of his activities in Dearborn Heights, but he was very much loved and appreciated, and it is a, a, a hard hit close to home. Yes, Madam thank Chair. you. He, he did work at the uh, Richard Jung Center for a time, and he, even after he stopped working there, he would stop by and check on things. And Okay, thank you. At this point, yes, we need to get back on the agenda. <clears throat> okay, this is for agenda approval. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Councilman Bazzi is opposed. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. This is minutes from the regular meeting of November 12th, 2019. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdullah. I move that we approve the minutes from November 12th, 2019, regular meeting of the Dearborn Heights City Council is outlined in item 4A. Support. Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? We need to go back up under the Pledge of Allegiance. I in the school board. Ooh. Also, we'd like yeah. to. Huh? Okay, we'll do it later. Next item on the agenda is public hearing and comment on agenda items. Vote on it. It's agenda vote. items only. Vote. No, we have to vote on the on the minutes. Oh, okay. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed. The ayes have it. Next, we have public hearing and comment on agenda items. Please limit it to two minutes, and it must be agenda items only. You want to announce the vote? No comment? Okay. At this time, we will go on to the next agenda item. This is fund transfer and current claims. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move council approve uh, fund transfers and current claims. 6 1 through 32 as submitted. Support. Or by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella? I had a couple items on there. Um, the first couple are for Director Selmy, if you don't mind. I know some Director? place I've seen him. He's back there. So, items number three and eight, and I brought this up before, and, I, and, and I'm starting to really be concerned about it, and I, and I don't know. I don't know what the final solution is, but I just think we're spending a lot of money to outside 
resources between the tree service and the lawn cutting. And I was just wondering, like the tree service, for example, is 18700 for one month. I'm sorry, the, the lawn service. And then we got the tree service, 9600 And this is despite the fact that we were in the winter where it could be even more during certain months. There's no way at all possible, if we had to add more employees, I know this is something we'd have to discuss maybe for the budget, but maybe add, I mean, maybe, I'd, I'd love it if you could come up with a game plan, obviously, but adding more employees, something where we start doing that in-house and save ourselves, just between the two there, and again, this is kind of an off month, we got a good, what is it, uh, 28,000, give or take, yeah. per month on that. Is there any way at all by adding more employees that maybe can do both or maybe you move employees, employees around and we start doing it in-house instead of um, sending it out yeah. all the if time? We, if we could hire employees, that would be something that we could probably do in-house. Do we are currently down six people and can't get applicants to can't apply for full-time jobs, let alone seasonal jobs. Um, so you're on board with something like this, but your issue is getting people to, work, people. to want to work. Uh, the, and the grass cutting contract is something that we were going to uh, go out for bids this uh, winter, early spring to revisit that. The tree contract, this council approved a two-year contract with Dearborn Tree Correct. Um, just recently to do work that um, is beyond the scope of the city's capabilities. Uh, talking 70, 80, 90 foot trees. Um, that, okay. That, I mean, that, that's, a, that's an art. If no. it's not doable, it's not doable. Then maybe, you know, at least for the future, the, the, the lawn service may be doing that in-house because I, I just think it's just a lot of money that we're the, the, paying. The, that amount we're of, the amount of grass that this company cuts, and to the best of my knowledge this year, there was not one single complaint about high grass. Um, the area that they cut is, is very vast, mm -hmm. especially along this Van Bourne corridor, the incinerator all along the river. Um, that's a lot of work. Okay, well, I'm just you know suggesting something to consider. Yep. And then item number 23, uh, which I believe you'd be able to answer also. I had a concern on that one. And this is the one with uh, Plant Moran. In this particular invoice for the audience, just in case, it says invoice pertaining to the analysis of the activity within the water and sewer fund as it relates to forecast of long-term user rates. And the amount of charge was 8190 Now, I'm not an expert on this particular charge, but it seemed like a lot of money. Um, is there any thinking or thought process behind that, that particular amount? It seems like a pretty high amount to just analyze the water and sewer fund. Right. Well, they, they do take a deep dive into that fund uh, to do the analysis, so it is very time consuming. Um, I, maybe, can, maybe the controller can speak a little bit more detail to that, but the, you know, the, the water rates is a very uh, scientific type of thing. It's, you know, there's a lot of ana analytic, analytical work that goes into it, and it's very time consuming. Okay, Madam Chair. And then I've got two more quick ones. Number uh, 28. We had, um, I know I talked with the chief, and I know they sent us, thank you, chief, they sent us new copies, but unfortunately it's still, I don't think it's you guys' fault, I think it's the original tire company that didn't put together a good uh, printout of the receipts. So is there any way on that particular one, I, I mean, I don't want to not pay somebody, but personally what I would suggest is we pay them conditional upon getting a final clear copy, because I didn't we, receive the email. We have the owner of the okay. tire company then here tonight, Rick. He's going to bring it up right now. It would be in question, but I just happened to bring the copies that we have in house. Okay. Present them to you. There are a couple of words that have a statement that aren't there. So you can bring them up here. I'll take them. And we can look at them. That you can distribute them. First hand copies. When we send them over I can get them back to you. They, if you want. They go I think it's the carbon or something. I don't know. Because yeah. this is the second time it's happened where it's not that clear. Which well, one did you want? Well, I, I don't want to go through all of them now. And like I said, I don't mind okay, paying. Well, oh, yeah, this is much copy. better. I've been made aware that there's uh, some additional information that uh, you guys have requested recently. So in-house diligently, we made sure that we were working on VIN numbers and that sort of thing. Whereas in the past, we've done just vehicle number. Correct. So we tried to correct that. If there's anything else I uh, need to correct, I'm more than help or willing to do it. Okay. Maybe I get 30 or 60 days. In the meantime, if I could get paid on these no, I agree. Like I said, I agree with you getting paid. I'd just like to see better <clears throat> copies. Yep, and, and they now. sent us, they scanned them so you know it's whatever they had. So whatever they're, they're getting not is not very clear good. enough. They're not very good yeah. at all. I was trying to read them. They're horrible. I will, I will, uh, 
dutifully make sure that. Okay. Uh, Council Thank Chair. You. Okay. Councilman Muscat. Um, I see our new chief is here, uh, Mr. Petrie. Chief Petrie, but uh, again, I want to stress that there's some vehicles that need to be left out of the uh, public's eye. May, may I say it that way? Sure. Uh, that uh, it would be beneficial to our policemen who work for their safety that we don't publicize some of these vehicles. Well, I think they do that already, don't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's already done before it gets to us. Well, that's what, but I just want to make sure that, you know, when, when there's something that's omitted, if we can call the chief and let him tell us personally uh, what it is so we don't uh, publicize the type of vehicle or whatever. Because I got, you know, we, we need to look out for their safety more than, more than we know. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Um, so, I, again, uh, the item 6-3 I know was touched on. Um, I still have, have an issue. I know we brought it up before with the way that contract or the bidding went through and that we're still using the same uh, company uh, without any bids. Uh, and I know there was bids that were sent out. Um, the second item that we have here is a uh, 6-4 um, charged uh, to the water department, the sweepers. I'm not sure why the sweepers are uh, charged to the water department. I think we discussed that we once before that. Yeah, it's because the sweeper, the street sweeping uh, is part of the process of keeping the drains clean right. and mandate, I think it's mandate, it mandated by the, by the state that it falls under. Unfortunately, they, they get their hands in everything and because uh, I checked into that heavily and um, unfortunately, uh, we got to do what we got to do with within the confines of the state regs. Yeah, it's actually mandated by uh, the uh, state drinking water or stormwater acts and stuff like that. Correct. So um, it is a function of the stormwater permits that the city uh, has. Thank you. Um, the second last item is uh, 623 with Plain Moran. And I did mention that the last two meetings that uh, excessive amounts are going to uh, Plant Moran. Obviously, we haven't seen uh, any bids going out for uh, for the, a lot of these services. I think we're getting close to 200, if not exceeded 200,000. I don't know, this is very coincidence that after the forensic audit going through, the forensic audit stuff, all of a sudden a lot of stuff is being done with Plant Moran. So again, I have an issue with that one too. Okay, any for Councilman Muscat? I have one on 631, the Old Orchard Pond Restoration, <laughs> uh, for $4,717.32. And here we go, we got the budget before the million five hundred sixty-eight thousand six eighty-eight ninety-nine. I know that's not the budget for the Orchard Lake Pond. That was $250,000 plus a small fee that went to uh, Way trim. So I can't see it. Where where is it showing me how much money we have left in in the pond restoration and what's left in paying uh, way trim? I can't. Uh, I I think we need to hold this one back till we get some proper numbers here. Madam Chair. Mayor. Uh, we are very close, in fact, um, this is monitored by my office and myself personally. Uh, we are, we, I can comfortably say we are within budget and most likely will be under budget, will not exceed those amounts. In addition, all but the landscaping, uh, which we probably will not be able to do now till next year, uh, we should be in excellent shape in regards to the amount. We will not go over it. Mr. Mr. Hi. Council Chair? Councilman Muscat. It's great that you say that, but how could I approve something with an amount before payment of a million five sixty eight six eighty eight ninety nine when it was only $250,000? Because that is the total uh, budget. But wow. that the, for the water, but Sweet. it wasn't for the budget for the pond restoration. Right. right. The, the oh. pond restoration had a budget. Okay. So give me that Councilman, budget. we have Comptroller Vance. Step up to the microphone, please. Good evening, Council. The number that you're seeing there, since the water budget has not been adopted yet, the number that you're seeing there on any of the water invoices, like I told you, 
would be the cash account. That's why you're seeing that big number, because it's the balance of the cash account until the budget is formally approved by the council. There, that's the only number I can give you. I, I, I agree with what you're saying, and mm -hmm. I, honestly, I do. But we also agreed on a budget for the pond <clears throat> restoration a long time ago. I understand so, that. It's just so it's, when you put pond restoration, how come we don't have that account number and the money that's in that that account? Madam Chair, Councilman Abdella, because I mean, it hasn't. I don't know I mean, if I'm even asking though it's been approved that's that way, it here. hasn't because that budget hasn't been adopted. It's just not added to it. So. But, okay. but I mean, I could check okay. the balance let's, and tell you. Let's, let's, let's have Councilman Abdella. So, Controller, what if we did it this way? And, and, and I obviously know about accounting a lot more than I do. So I understand, okay, from your perspective, this is the accounting way and that's the only way we could do it. That's fine. But what if we did just like you would do like an asterisk, just, and, and, and I know the Councilman had asked for it before, just below here, or maybe some additional paper, just given a total breakdown of what we've spent so far and how much is left. I mean, it could be done that way. That'd be I simple. Mean, we could, and we're hoping at the next meeting that the water budget will be adopted yeah, and this will gonna, be a non-issue. We're going to present it at the next meeting, and we hope that the council will find time to both deal with the audit presentation and also the, and we're giving you two, almost two years worth of budget on the water department because we're so far into this year, it just makes sense to do a two-year budget. I know, but it, 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 it shouldn't be that difficult, though, <coughs> you know, to just get total breakdown. We had 250000 we subtracted 10000 for this, 5000 for this, 4000 well, I mean, for that, and we have 111000 I mean, okay, it's pretty if, simple. If, if you look at the Wade Trim budget, the bill, I don't know what number that was. Was it 6, 631? When you look at 631, on the bottom, Wade Trim has an amount that typically... Where is it? Yeah, if you look in the corner on the um, left-hand <coughs> side, you see that they were allotted $25,000. You can see that they've billed $17,000 to date. So there's $7,900. So there's something that's telling you that that portion has not gone over budget. And if you get a pay statement from the contractor, you're going to see on that pay statement how much they've billed for, how much they or how much their contract was, how much they've billed for. So you can see it indirectly if you if you're looking at the invoices, you should be able to see that neither one of those parts have gone over. And if they haven't gone over, then that budget hasn't gone over. Again, yeah. I shouldn't I'll have to do all of that. Well, you know, sir, you could ask me before the meeting and I could have a tally for you. I, didn't ask me. I mean, is, I put these numbers here. This is not the first here. time I've asked. I know, but I put. I've said it, what, three, four times already at three different meetings? But we don't have a budget adopted, so I can't. So in particular, you want this one to have a breakdown. But, I have no problem doing the breakdown, but I need to know in advance. I can't just. But we've already had a budget for this, for the pond restoration and for weight trim. Yeah, we but I mean, did. So that was signed, sealed, and delivered. So all that had to do was put down the amount left after. That's it. I'm not asking for a, for anything that's that's and, not. And I could give you if you asked me. In advance, I just don't know that number. The clerical that does these every day, he doesn't know that that's what you want for that particular. Would you minute. direct him to do that then? I mean, I can. Yeah, Thank but like you. I said. All right, then we'll it's, have you know, direct them. I understand, but you know what? I'm going to say this again. We already budgeted X amount of dollars for this a long okay. time ago. It doesn't matter if we got a water budget today or tomorrow. We had a budget for this, and that amount should be here. I shouldn't have to ask for it. It's here. And that's all, and I've been saying that all along. Oh, you have. Okay. That's true. So this is not something new. It's something that I've been asking for, so and this was a done deal a long time ago. This is the last time we'll direct you to make sure that you give us a balance from the budget for that. Is, it, is that the only item you want me to do that for? I mean, I'm doing what you're asking by putting this to cash account because there is no budget. I have no problem doing it, but anything I have to know been, that that's what you want. Anything that's been budgeted in the past needs to be put on, on anything that's been budgeted. Okay. I do want to remind the City Council that the amounts that you see expended for the River Oaks Pond is going to be more than the $250,000. Right. The City is fronting the residents who are paying us back over the 15 years, um, $98 a home for 15 years, the money for the rest of the construction. So the expenditures you're gonna see is more than the 250,000 that the city is. You're gonna be approving all of the expenditures for that construction project, and then we're gonna be getting paid back. As long as and it's so, detailed, 
I and, understand. And the proper backups are put on. I have no problem approving them. Right. But, but I guess the, prop- the, the, the amount 250 kept being thrown out earlier, you're going to see more expenditures than the 250000 And I understand that. But again, okay. as long as we have the proper backup, yep. I'm okay with it. Okay, yep. let's yep. move on. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Councilman Azzi is opposed. <clears throat> Passes. Next item on the, attenda- on the agenda is reports from city officials. We have Building Director Domsky, BSNA Field Inspection Net, Building Department Net, and Online Community Development. Ma'am Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that we concur with Building and Engineering Director Larry Domsky. Um, at- what he's proposed uh, that they're looking to buy tablets for the inspectors and online services for the home and business owners as well as the contractors and realtors and this will assist in eventually offering limited inspection services on friday without closing the city i'm sorry costing the city more money in staffing and opening up a brick and mortar facility uh, this would help the building department, and this is going to be buildingdepartment.net, and it's also BSNA online community development where people would be able to pull permits. So he is asking, go to the second uh, page, that we approve the purchase of the fieldinspection.net, uh, buildingdepartment.net, and BSNA online community development for a total of cost not to exceed 11110 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the attached agreements. In addition, he is asking that our body authorize the payment upon successful execution of the agreement as outlined in item 9A. Support. Support by Bob, by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? Council Chair. Councilman. <clears throat> is uh, Director Domsky here? Yes. Can yes, you explain this to us, uh, what, you're, what you got planned here? The field inspection they'll be setting up, they'll be setting up for the computers and uh, inspectors that have their uh, laptops in the car when they do their inspection. Be done, everything's done on paper right now, and so outdated. That's that part of it. And then the building part, well, would be with the comptroller, the treasurer, and the building department. You know, it or it'd be a computer in our area where we when we do the their permits, we give them a SKU number or a barcode number, they would take it to the treasurer's office, pay it, then they come back and we print out their inspection automatically. And the last one for the community on service, that's like everybody can go online and get their permits, a certain amount of them, like the easy ones, they they don't have to be approved, they can get go online and get. That's what that's for. You mean on, on Fridays they can go online and certain jobs could get a permit on, on Friday? I believe they'd be able to go online anytime they want. And Saturday and Sunday <clears throat> during those days? That's correct. And I mean, how, how, how severe of a job could that get there? Well, like? we're going to start out with the basics, the roofing, uh, minor electrical plumbing. Anything that needs plan review will <clears throat> not be uh, going through our office. Okay. Mm. Director? Okay. Councilman okay. Abdella? So if if a resident has a city inspection, I know they'll be able to pull up their city inspection online right now, which is great, because in the past sometimes they had to come into the department to pick it up. But let's say they have an inspection, repairs are done, you guys come out to re-inspect it, and hypothetically two items don't pass. Would they be able to go online and look up what two items did not pass? Yes, sir. Okay. Council Perfect. Chair? Thank you. Councilman Muscat? Uh, you know, you, uh, I I have a problem with some of this, like a roofing permit. Why do we even need a roofing permit? There is no inspector there when they tear it off. Nobody there to inspect the the, the roof substrate. Nobody there to inspect if all the underlayment and freeze guards put on properly. Uh, And to me, it's just like a, 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 a payment for a homeowner that have to pay for Nobody's climbing on the roof to check to see if there's any exposed nails either. Hello. Sir, most cities don't. We, uh, that's just a protection for the resident. There's so many uh, unlicensed contractors out there that okay. do not do good work, and we do to follow up on it, make sure they have the permit. If we had no permits for roofing, it'd be, it'd be a crazy. So will this here protect somebody from an unlicensed contractor? So not just anybody can go on there and apply for this? Uh, it has to be a licensed contractor or, or a homeowner. They're going to have to have proof that it's a homeowner. Okay. 
So, uh, and I can understand that better. If, it, if you got your license, you got to put your license number in to, to get the to get it approved. Madam right. Chair. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Councilman Abdullah. For Council, must, this is something that Dearborn has been using for a long I know many I cities do, but Dearborn has been using it for a long time. And I know a lot of residents really, really, really like it. Well, you I think know. contract, legitimate contractors will love it. Right, right. And then now what those will create, I think that will help the department. There will be a lot less people coming up to the counter there. That's correct. So, good. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is Fire Chief Brogan update to squad purchase via MEDC grant. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move uh, Council authorize a payment for a new squad being purchased with the MEDC grant funding in the amount of $197,507. Uh, this purchase is 100% covered with grant money uh, with payment upon receipt as outlined in 9B. Support. Support, Support by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> the ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is from former Police Chief Volta Attorney, and we do have our new Police Chief Petrie here today. Um, this is for flashback HD upgrade kit and equipment purchase and payment. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdullah. I move that we concur with former Chief Dan Volta Torney, uh, requesting authorization to purchase and pay upon receipt for the following five flashback HD upgrade kit. And I'm not going to repeat them all. Six other items. Well, actually, 20, uh, yeah, so. many, many other items. The cost for this project is $21,839.75. And this is as outlined in item 9C. Support. Support by Councilman Bazzi. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is also from former Police Chief Volt Attorney, L3 Communications Service Agreement. Madam Chair. Hans McConston. I move we concur with our former Police Chief Dan Volt Attorney and approve the uh, renewal for the L3 Communications Service Agreement in the amount of $8,028 uh, <clears throat> to run till November 19th, 2020, as outlined in 9D. Support. Support. Board by Councilman Bazzi, is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda under ordinances <clears throat> and resolution, this is a council resolution for smoking lounges. I'm going to suggest that we just go ahead and vote on it because it's no longer necessary. We should just vote no on it. Um, I, I'll open it to discussion, but it's no <clears throat> longer necessary because... You have to be a reading on it first. You know, we've already sent out the applications, and that's why we had to come up with this. So. Council Chair, we still have to have, have to a motion it. on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Council, okay. You're going to make the motion? We, uh, I'll go ahead. Well, uh, if there's not well I was going to let the motion go through, and then we vote on it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Councilman Muscat? I'll make a mo motion just to open up the discussion to approve the resolution as outlined in 11A. Okay. Support. For a Councilman. Um, just went so. Go ahead. I know. No, well, you, I, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, just so everyone knows that these applications were sent out, I believe, in, in October. Was that the date? I'm not sure. The, the day after our meeting, I, I believe. Uh, after the last meeting, not yeah. the other one that right. you're talking about. So in these November. All, applications have already been sent out. Yes. And uh, so there's no reason for a moratorium to be added on no, for at the, six at the, months or whatever. At the time we had requested it, there was a need for it, but it's no longer necessary. So like I said, we just I would suggest we just vote it down, but you can vote whatever way you like. Council Chair. Council Muscat. Uh, I, I know everything was in limbo uh, with a with everything on this, and uh, a lot of the uh, businesses uh, that we have are running into a problem with being able to do everything that's necessary. And I don't know if it's if I'm correct in saying that they could be the the seven businesses that are there if they're give it, going to be given extra time to complete this. I'm going to ask Mr. Clerk what he feels on that before I say anything um, on it because they do have their applications. Do they do you think they may need extra time for this? Uh, Mr. Clerk? Well, I, I think um, 
there's some misstatement here as to when the applications went out, um, what the purpose was, and, and what this resolution was all about. Um, if this honorable council remembers some five or seven weeks ago, we, we met here. I explained um, <clears throat> the difficulties we had. I explained that we were putting an onus on our businesses that um, they had to comply with now an ordinance. It, it was explained quite clearly that they had a further um, requirements uh, by the state of Michigan and that um, they had to complete those between uh, January 1st and January 31st. Um, it is my understanding um, that failure to complete that um, will result in them not getting a smoking exemption license, which would um, theoretically shut them down. Um, so when we um, met here and discussed it, um, this honorable body asked the attorney to do the resolution, if you remember correctly. You were the ones that asked the attorney to do the resolution based on that type, uh, based on that discussion. The applications were not sent out the next day. The applications were not sent out until you did not act on it three weeks later after that. So at that time, um, based on some prudent judgment that I thought I exhibited, I decided not to delay those business owners any further from being able to fulfill what the ordinance um, was requiring them to fill, and I could no longer delay for another two weeks. That would be a five-week delay. <clears throat> so therefore, that's when I sent those out. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm not, not done ahead. yet with. Okay. Uh, I, I asked the <clears throat> clerk to, to respond to something. So would it be fair that this body extend a another little period of time for these businesses to comply with this since uh, we're running short here on time for these uh, to comply with a small portion of that ordinance, which was part of the application. And uh, we can give them some extra time to complete it, e even with the background checks when they get something with, they can get on iChat, which would give our police department a break where they don't have to do all the backgrounds if they produce it off of iChat. So uh, that would be my recommendation to this council to, um, to give these business owners a, another small little extension just on the application part, but not you know, so we don't stop the ordinance because I don't want the ordinance to stop. I mean, we voted for this ordinance and we overrid a v veto on this ordinance. So I, I think the veto, the ordinance is something we need. But I, we got to give the the the, the uh, business owners a little time to make up that difference from the time the moratorium ended and the time you sent them out, uh, and not from your fault at all because you were not clear on, on what had to happen. So that's how I well, feel. I actually tried to put it on the last agenda and all the council members said they needed time to read it. That's why it was delayed yeah, because we, of us. Yeah, but we also waited a long time to get from point A to point mm -hmm. B too. And, and that was not the clerk's fault, uh, but uh, it was a mix up at best by well, Before I go on, group. I'm going to ask Mr. Clerk, is this still necessary, this moratorium? Do you feel well, it's still I, necessary uh, or? That's, that's your decision whether it's necessary or not. What I stated to you and, and based on my um, discussions with Mr. Cressman from the um, Michigan Health Department that um, if this is not completed by January 1st, that they are in peril of not receiving a smoking. Correct. And that's Mention. why that's why I would ask for for the the seven businesses that are in, in, in that that's covered under our ordinance be given some extra time to complete this. Okay, Councilman Abdullah. So one of the issues, if you recall, the last time we had the meeting, it was at the study session, I believe it was. There was the attorney, and I'm blanking out in the name. Jeff Clark. Jeff Clark. Jeff Clark. Yeah, Jeff. We had instructed him to put together an some sort of an application, if you recall. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, if we sent out an application, 
what application would it have been? Because remember we instructed them, we said, because you had, you had on your end, you said that the ordinance wasn't very clear on a lot of different items. And then we instructed them to put together some sort of an application process that, uh, I'm sorry, application package that we would, I presume, approve, or somebody would approve it, and then we'd start sending them out. So what application was sent out? Do you know offhand? I, I don't believe you're um, properly recalling what happened. Uh, at the meeting, Mr. Clark said that he already had reviewed an application that I had formulated mm -hmm. and that it followed the ordinance. So that was good? To a T, well, yeah. and All he right. said that perfect. that application was sufficient. Okay, perfect. Because I reviewed the meeting, and he did say that. Perfect. Um, Councilman Bazzi? Uh, okay, so <clears throat> I don't think, well, this, the first thing I have to say on uh, this resolution is too vague. Um, I mean, the next thing we're going to put down is, okay, we need a resolution to not enforce any speed limits or stop signs or lights. We're asking not to do an enforcement, which is ridiculous on, on this resolution. So I think we need to vote on this. And if the new, uh, the existing seven, if they need extra time, I actually prepared the resolution that I can put it on the agenda at the next meeting to extend if they're required to extend. So we still have at least uh, two, maybe three meetings before the deadline. So I think we need to find out if the businesses that you sent the applications to, if they need extra time. If they, knew, if they need extra time, like I said, I do have a resolution already typed, ready to introduce. That's the first item. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is, um, again, you know, this, this resolution is very vague and uh, it's not really mentioning who, what does this pertain to, which place. It's just existing. And again, the state, when there's nothing in place, the state can give any license to anybody because as of right now, there's nothing in place. I mean, obviously, you said you sent the application. Um, I'd like to see the, uh, the application to see um, what, what it entails, again, you know, as we mentioned at the last meeting, you know, this, uh, I think somebody already mentioned that, that this application was... Uh, but that's an administrative thing. That's not our... Job. No, no, I mean, not to approve. To I'm not talking about approving. I mean, I would just like to see if, you know, just to look at it at least. I have, I mean, I haven't seen it, or I haven't seen it online. Yes, you have, Councilman. Uh, we which one? Have, yeah, is that the one? Is, so that's the one that you sent was the one that you sent out. Okay, at this point, let's keep okay. on to so what is I, on again, the agenda uh, that's and not the, get so to this, off. Okay, so this again, I, to reiterate, this is too vague. Okay. And if we need extra time, I can, like I said, I have a resolution already typed up. Okay. I can At put this up point, the next agenda. let's keep it to this. And right. any other discussion in regards to 11A, the smoking lounge Madam resolution? Chair. Madam Chair, or go ahead. Oh, corporate counsel? Yes. Uh, as you all know, Mr. Clark is the one who is working on this particular matter. Has anyone discussed with Mr. Clark the legal ramifications of not adopting this and what this could end up meaning? Because I don't know that there was any uh, communication. Uh, Mr. Clark uh, spoke to me briefly about what normally the city would be looking for in terms of the resolution. In general, all I've deferred completely to him other than to allow, you know, to give him a little general information. And I caught okay. the tail end of your discussion, and I was under the impression that there were other reasons to end up adopting a moratorium, which it appears that the city clerk is alluding to, other than just the application itself. Um, so uh, I, I think it would be prudent for this honorable body to uh, have Mr. Clark's input before doing something definitive with respect to, to this. Okay, thank you. Councilman Constant. Maybe we, it might be an idea just to table this to the, our next meeting. Let's right. just do that. It's taken up too much time and we're not getting anywhere with it. We have an ordinance in place on smoking lounges, excuse me, Council Chair. And I don't want that to be held hostage by stopping the application process, okay? The application process has got to go through. We're putting a bind on the clerk's office by not going one way or the other. He needs to have a d definitive direction of what to do. He's taken it upon himself, taken upon himself to do a lot of work, a lot of research, and uh, and even through the toughest time of the year, election cycle, we, you know, our indecision here has put him through 
a lot here. Okay. So um, I think a vote on this one way or the other, and if Councilman Bazzi has something that we can extend a time period for the the uh, applications and uh, uh, to go to give them more time, and that gives us a time to maybe we can even set a fee if we'd like to. Okay, well, at this point, we do have a resolution that we need to vote on. Are we right, right. Councilman Constant? Like I said, one possibility would be a table it or another possibility would, I don't know if we can do this or not, make the changes now to this and then pass it that Councilman Bazzi may have in mind. Well, I think we should wait for the next meeting for so we just All right, what does one. everyone want to do? Council Chair. Councilman Wenzel. Um, just to clarify, Mr. Clerk, when when did you mail those out to the businesses and, and how many did you mail out just to the existing businesses? Seven. I mailed them out the day after the council did not take action. Um, that would have been two weeks ago. It would have been October 23rd. That's how long. And in your, in your opinion, November, these November applications, 13th. Could, November they, 13th. could they be um, filled out in, in a week by a business that means a lot to them? They got it. I can't answer for any businesses, Councilman. I don't, I don't know. They got two months. All right, at this point, Thanks. I think we should just go ahead and either decide if we're going to table it or if we're going to vote on it. Well, but we have a motion on the floor to so accept. So we need to address the motion. Okay. And it's been seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Those opposed? No. 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 Fails. Next, we have new business. Business license renewal for Bellagio Banquet located at 23900 West Warren. Madam Chair. Councilman Odella. I move that we approve the business license renewal application for Bellagio Banquet located at 23900 West Warren Avenue, Dearborn Heights, as outlined in item 13A. Support. Supported by Councilman Bazzi. Is there any discussion? Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. Uh, I've been getting a lot of uh, emails, I'm sure everyone has, about this business from a um, I don't know if it's a group of people or a person or whatnot. Person. And I, I believe our uh, billing engineer department tried to get a hold of me uh, and had the wrong phone number. Could you tell us what's, uh, at, at least tell us what's going on and uh, the everything that was cited in those emails that I forwarded? And so we have a, a kind of an idea of what's. I believe Mr. Baydoon's, uh we gave him a temporary school <clears throat> until January 2nd. He has everything complete on the inside of the building. He has everything, the uh, patio was all passed last week. I believe he's waiting a letter for a letter from MDOT because they're allowing him to keep one driveway open and he wants to finish his landscaping. And he was in about maybe a week and a half ago and said it should be done by January 1st. Um, I see MDOT had closed up some of those on Telegraph. Mm -hmm. Is yes. there a reason why they closed those? That's, they didn't approve it. They, they have their own sets of rules. Why? I, I mean, are there's rules being broken there. I, I, that's the question. Just, no. no, they were already. They, them drives were there. He just started using them. M dots. He's working it out. I believe M dots. When he said M dots, when let him keep one. That's what. Uh, and he will have a letter for us from M dots. So, as far as you're concerned. Everything is up and up with Bellagio, uh, parking lot, structures, and the whole nine yards. Everything except the landscaping and the MDOT decision, what's going to be done. The railing's up in the back. Uh, the carport was approved, or the patio out back was approved. I believe it was last. So Thursday. according to the city, he's all ready to go. He, d he has a temporary CVO fi final landscaping and the MDOT approval. <clears throat> Okay, thank Which you. Which means all the safety items. Are yeah, yeah well, and, and that's why I just want that out in public that everybody, everything is everything. good with the city. So with our end, it's good. MDOT's a different entity that he'd have to deal with. I mean, it's a beautiful building. I can tell you that. Yeah. Council Chair. Council Wenzel. Are there any issues with the county? Um, I know there was uh, the uh, runoff into the into the uh, Rouge River there, um, the parking lot drainage. Um, were, that would be the county that yeah, would deal with it, not us. Now, would that stop us from giving a certificate of if it is a pro issue with the county? No. Mr. Baydoon said the only issue was outstanding right now was the MDOT issue. 
and his landscaping. But shouldn't we know that, though? I mean, I mean, he comes in and says this, but shouldn't a, we know that? But it's a different okay, level of government. We have not received any letter from uh, Wayne County that he's in any kind of violation. Okay, that's that's what I want to hear. Okay. Hey. It's just odd that the, the, the two uh, uh, curb cuts that are on Telegraph, the one main entrance is closed off, and a little tiny one down down a ways is open. The most dangerous one is opened. And I, I was wondering why. Because the one down was the original. That would be an MDOT thing. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't have privilege to that information unless we called MDOT, I would think. Yeah, they, they approved egress but not ingress. And I believe. He has valley parking for everybody, so yeah. everybody goes back out the front of the building. Mm -hmm. Valley only. Yeah. Okay. Valley only. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Councilman Costin. Yeah, and I think for our concern is is you know, and it says here is water bills paid, property taxes are paid, and so forth. I know there is some issue regarding parking and so forth, but I don't know that that's our to renew the license. Uh, yeah, it's not. As it has nothing to, to do with the, what, what we have on the table here is to renew their license only. Nothing with the county and nothing with the state. That's a different entity. Um, so at this time, we're going to take a vote on renewing Bellagio Banquet Hall's business license. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, I'd like to apologize to Dr. Musalem. Um, I'd like to introduce him if you come up. I totally flew past it. Um, he is our new superintendent for Crosswood School District. Would you like to say a few words for us? I you would, please, yourself? thank you. <clears throat> so my apologies, I come up here, I sound like Kermit the Frog, so I've been, uh, <laughs> I didn't actually swallow a frog. Yeah. But um, it is an honor <clears throat> to be here. And it is an honor to serve the Crestwood community as the new superintendent for the Crestwood Schools. I'm also honored to have a wonderful team with me. You know, we have President uh, Ansonek, Trustee Kaminsky, Trustee Fawaz, and Trustee Garcia, who are here with me tonight. And of course, as you all know, Trustee Lynn Sinea. I want, I, I asked for the honor and the privilege to speak to the council and to the, the Dearborn Heights community because I truly believe in 22 years of education, 16 of those years I've been in administration, the strength of the schools comes from the strong partnership with the city, working hand in hand. I mean, you look behind you and you look at the seal of the city of Dearborn Heights and you see a family and you see them walking to a structure that represents you know, the center of the city. I want the Crestwood schools to be the center of our city because we all know that the success of our children and a partnership between the city officials, the city council, the school board, the superintendent, the teachers, the children. I had a great meeting with uh, the city clerk last week where we discussed how we can expand our partnerships. And I want to continue to expand those partnerships. I remember when I was principal of River Oaks Elementary School for the Dearborn schools, but River Oaks, as you're talking about the River Oaks Pond, part of the Dearborn Heights community. And Chief Gavin was the chief at the time, and he used to come by the school all the time. I want to build that partnership with Chief Petrie. I want to build that partnership with the council. I want to build that partnership where our students see city council, they see our police officers, they see our fire department as partners. Because that's the key to the success of our students. And I will tell you, as a superintendent, it's not just my responsibility, and it's not just the responsibility of the board and myself to be a power rate, because that's what I call it, it's a power rate. We work together. It's the responsibility of us not just to have the highest level of education, but to have a strong infrastructure, a strong partnership, and a growth with the mayor, the city council, the city offices, the police force, the fire department. I truly believe, and I've said this many times and I'll continue to say it, a lot of times when you go into a new position in a leadership, it's hard to see the light at the tunnel. As a superintendent of Crestwood Schools, it's been one month, it's not hard to see that light. The light is bright, the light is shining, and I look forward to getting closer and closer to that light. Because I know many of you were at my interviews and I saw you as I was trying to sneak out the back. 
One thing that I continuously mention about the Crestwood schools that our goal is, is that the Crestwood schools and the Crestwood community and the Dearborn Heights, the city of Dearborn Heights, becomes a beacon, becomes a lighthouse district where people want to be in Dearborn Heights. Where people, when they're looking for a new house, they want to buy a house in Dearborn Heights. When people are trying to determine what school they want to go to, they want to go to the Crestwood schools. That's our goal. <clears throat> and I'm here to say that we are your partner, and I know you are our partner, and I can't wait to build that partnership because we are nothing alone. We are everything together. And I hope to see us all working together in a constant and continuous and systematic fashion because our children are the ones who are gonna suffer if we don't work as a team. So again, I wanna thank you for this opportunity to speak to you this evening. And I truly, 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 Madam Chair, City Council, Mr. Mayor, I truly can't wait to build our partnerships. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I, can, can I make a quick comment? I actually had experience with uh, Dr. Masalam a few years ago. I was deployed for 14 months. That was probably one of my hardest deployments, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for the Marines. And uh, so we had a chat, you know, before my deployment, and uh, I told them that I was leaving for 14 months. Actually, it was about, you know, close to 15 months I was out and uh, uh, what he's uh, what he said is everything is true and I experienced it um, he actually helped my kid my son and he, he assigned the he had the, the council the counselor uh, send me continuous emails to update me on the, what's going on with my son you know his grades and everything so every, every month I was getting an email so, so thank you for that uh, so, I mean, it was hard to begin with to be deployed to that region, but it made it a lot easier knowing somebody like yourself was taking care of my, my son. And um, one of the things I know that uh, you advocate for veterans, and when I returned, I remember you started something at the high school uh, v uh, for Memorial Day. And uh, so I know I came spoke few, for a few times every year. I was invited to come to the school and uh, speak on behalf of some uh, veterans. <coughs> and uh, I know that you're always good with the parents, so I want to, uh, I mean, I'm going to echo what you said. Uh, you are for the veterans. I mean, you took care of my son. You took care, of, you take care of veterans. I mean, you started this thing to teach students about the value uh, of what the veterans have done for this country and I've noticed that every every time we come to your school the students they listen and I mean you, you can drop a needle in an auditorium and you can hear uh, I mean you can we can they're very interested in what the veterans have to say so thank you for that I appreciate you and we're proud to have you here thank you sir thank you Next item on the agenda is comment from council members. I'm going to start off with stating that um, our police department is doing stuff a SWAT truck. This will be this Saturday, November 30th, 2019, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. <coughs> at the Dearborn Heights Target, located at 26650 Ford Road. They ask you for a new toy donation to benefit Dearborn Heights Goodfellows so no child is left without a Christmas. So please stop by Target on Saturday and donate a new toy between 12 and 4. And that's Target on Ford Road. Council Chair. Councilman Wenzel. <clears throat> um, a few things. Um, I'd like to, uh, our new police chief, Petrie, to uh, be aware that we'll, we'll be asking for an update, and you might have to get these from your former police chief, um, on uh, body cam bids. We, we mentioned this uh, months ago. We haven't got any bids on that yet. And a contract with the K-9 officer. We'd like some information on that also. Um, I'd like to thank the past members from the Dads Club for being here and our newest members from the Dads Club for being here attending our meeting tonight. Thanks for coming out. Welcome back, Dan Brooks. Nice to see you back there again. Um, last week I had the honor and pleasure of attending the uh, Veterans Resource Fair at Bellagio, very nice establishment, really nice. Um, it was attended by dignitaries from around Wayne County, including our own Councilman Bill Bazzi and uh, Wayne County um, Diane, Diane, Commissioner Diane Webb was there, several others. Um, a very dynamic speaker, speaker, Sergeant Major Green, unbelievable. This guy 
you could listen to him all day talk. But th there was some, a mention during that uh, speech that only less than 1% of our citizens that are able to join the military, less than 1%. So as I do at all the meetings, I'd like all of our veterans to stand up, please, be recognized. Thank you, thank you for your service. I, we really appreciate that. Also, um, I attended, uh, me and my family attended the Wayne County Light Fest and End Afterglow at the Warren Valley Golf Course. Very, very nice, nice uh, put, uh, put, uh, event. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank Wayne County and also congratulate Wayne County Parks and, for their 100th anniversary this year. And um, uh, one other thing is uh, I've gotten calls about this recycling since we've been brought, brought it up. So many people have asked me about, is, are they recycling our, the material that's in the recycling cans or not? And a question I, uh, that I want answered, the only question I want is, is, do we pay extra for recycling? The recycling is part of the contract. And, is it uh, extra though? I mean, it's, it's extra, right? It's, is it? Well, it's part of the bid contract. No, I mean, I, it, no, it's not extra, it's just one big thing. Yeah. So if we paid, so we could just, Okay, no, there's no extra charge for recycling. It's the same as this if we picked up regular trash. So if we got rid of recycling, they'd charge us the same? It was figured in. Yeah, it's figured in, but I mean, is it is it something that's, uh, that was, okay. if Let's regular garbage first. pickup was $10 and recycling was two, so our total bill was 12? No. no. What's, you're gonna increase, though, you're gonna increase your landfill costs, and then your CWCSA will increase, your tonnage costs will increase. The okay. more that went to recycling had a reduction in the amount that went to the landfill. So there was a significance. One of the things that some communities decided to do, we did not do that here because I didn't want to take on the risk and the council agreed with me because there was an aftermarket for recycled and that was true years ago. And so the some of the communities said, no, we want to control that and get all the revenue from that. So they segregated in their uh, <coughs> contracts, but they took the risk. So now where you don't have a market for it, they're having to pay a significant amount of money to get recycling products that cannot be recycled, and they have to incur the cost of, a, of getting rid of it. We didn't do that in our particular case. I shifted that risk to the garbage company. Okay, now could we get the uh, representative from GFL at a, a, a meeting coming up real soon, first of the year? Would that be possible, Mayor? I have talked to them about it. Uh, I, need, I need to get a date and a time, and uh, they Sooner would the be, better. as long as there's enough advance notice, they would, uh, they would come. Okay, I have already, you? reached out to them, but I've not received the date or time from the chair. First meeting well, in Well, first January. meeting in January will be fine. Uh, no, you gotta give me, a lot of times, I don't know where January 1st, you gotta give me a date. It would be the second Tuesday in January before our meeting. What date is that, Don? Do we have I don't to... know. I can get back to you on that. Well, that's one. what I need. Okay. I'm not putting any blame on oh, you. Oh, no, just, no, 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 because I just that... know the second and fourth Tuesday, and the first meeting we have is the second Tuesday. Well, what yeah. day is that, Don? Well, it's easy to find out. Is it? 14. Fourteen. January fourteenth. January fourteenth. Okay. One one more thing is I got contacted by a local nonprofit um, food bank and they're in need of shopping carts. If there's any business out there that would like to donate some shopping carts to this nonprofit food bank, uh, you can contact me on Facebook, message me on Facebook, or or call me. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Councilman Ogdella. I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate our new police chief, Mike Petrie, and looking forward to working with you. And I'm sure you'll do a absolutely great job, just like our last chief. <laughs> and I thank the whole police department for serving and putting their lives on the line for all of us. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair. Councilman Bazzi. Um, I got a couple items. So with this chief, uh, actually I was talking to uh, Chief Haddad. Uh, I know we did that about two years before. Uh, 
Dearborn wanted to uh, challenge uh, a lot of surrounding cities for the Toys for Tots. I don't know if you are aware of the Toys for Tots program. That's the Marine Corps, uh, Marine Corps actually uh, reserves that heads it. And uh, so they want to challenge the Dearborn Heights and uh, again, you know, surrounding cities. And so they do have a drive. I mean, I'll, I'll be at that one as well. But if you want to take their challenge uh, they're actually there's a they're doing a publicity uh, publicity uh, event uh, out of channel two at the studio if you're interested you can get a hold of me i'll let you know we're going to be at the studio to uh, to advertise we can advertise this one and the one in dearborn which is december 10th so if you're interested in taking a challenge uh, and again all the toys that that are donated uh, will go to the local areas uh, will be the in this area here, they don't go anywhere but this area. And I've been part of it for at least 20 something years. And uh, I've, I've seen, you know, the other side of it, uh, people that actually come and take the toys. And I've, uh, <clears throat> uh, last year, I was at the warehouse and majority of the, the kids that came to get the toys were from Dearborn Heights, by the way. So this is uh, this is a good program, and again, if you want to participate in it, let me know. Uh, I can see if uh, you can go on air with us, uh, channel two, maybe channel seven as well. Uh, last last item, uh, uh, the item. Before you go on, I want to make sure I would tell everybody too. There's going to be a SWAT truck in Target's parking lot, so don't panic. Nothing's wrong. It's just they're collecting toys. <laughs> uh, second item that. Uh, the councilman uh, once mentioned again thank you for being there and uh, mr jackson was there as well yeah. and his uh, his wife um, um, i want to thank uh, wayne county treasurer uh, for hosting the event and they picked dearborn heights uh, they don't have to do that but they did uh, this is their third annual resource fair uh, at uh, it was at the Bellagio and they had a full house. Uh, I mean, there was there was so many veterans they were there, and there was a lot of resources uh, to help veterans. Everything from uh, I mean, from the VA a representative to a lot of vendors, uh, uh, insurance, uh, education. So, like I said, it was it was it was full packed house, and uh, I want to thank uh, thank Wayne County Treasurer Sabri. And also, I want to thank Taylor. Actually, they posted uh, this on their website, uh, even though it wasn't in our city, but they posted it and they uh, advertised for this event. So I want to thank Taylor as well. Thank you. Thank you. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. Um, thank you, Mr. Chief Petrie, for stepping up to uh, the plate to become our chief. Uh, wish you a lot of luck and work safely. Uh, I've got a, a more of like a, of an announcement. Um, I'm imploring everybody in the city that hears this to please place your trash cans somewhere other than the street. They're still we're still doing that, and everyone, you know, it, it makes it hard for our DPW director, our DPW workers, to do a proper <clears throat> job in whatever they're doing. It's either plowing snow, cleaning the streets. And just a reminder, our brand new street sweepers, I don't believe are capable enough of picking up big hunks of leaves. And it's prudent that we maintain the front of our homes, have a little pride in where we live, um, <laughs> kind of sweep up underneath the curb is get as much as we can off there so when our street sweepers do come by they can do a proper job in 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 maintaining our roadways uh for our own safety because those leaves can get just as slick as a a, a sheet of ice when they get wet especially large pieces so uh please uh, put your trash containers in a proper place either on a lawn or on the approach of your driveway and uh, keep your cars off the street on trash pickup day uh, and even when there's three inches or more of snow uh, we still see a lot of cars on the street and uh, the other thing is I sent an email today to Mr. McIntyre about the newspapers that are being delivered again I counted 30 of these newspapers on Robindale alone from Warren to Hass. They're all over the place. It just seems like somebody just doesn't care until we write a ticket for each and every one of them, 
and take them to court if we have to. <laughs> the ordinance is there. It's been supported by uh, uh, our, dis uh, our, our, our courts in, in Cincinnati. So there's no excuse why we can't stop this. And I, and I, I did a lot of research on this, worked hard on this. Uh, Gary, Mr. Miyake did also some work and research on it. So um, I think it's time to start writing tickets. And if you look through the whole section from Telegraph to, I believe, Gully from uh, Haas to Warren, they're all over the place, that whole section. We can go, like I said, 30 just on Robindale alone. And I believe there's a gentleman here tonight that brought a whole bag in for us that he picked up in his area, and that's the area. I, I didn't ask you to get up, I just <laughs> wanted to mention that you, you brought him. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, again, uh, I implore everyone in the city to, to, to chip in, and let's see if we can uh, keep this city uh, clean and prosperous. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Councilman Costin. Thank you. And uh, I also want to uh, wish our new police chief, uh, uh, Chief Petrie, good luck. If you need any help, there's a gentleman behind you who served as a police chief for a little while, our former Chief Lee Gavin, who I'm sure will. Oh. <laughs> uh, the Secretary of State is um, taking applications, uh, the redistricting for our congressional districts and our state house and senate which used to be a partisan process has now by ballot initiative been made nonpartisan, and they're taking applications for uh, commissioners to serve that will redraw the uh, the uh, congressional district state house and state senate that were uh, gerrymandered and gerrymandered badly um, there's certain requirements. You can't have held partisan office and so forth. Uh, but I encourage everybody to uh, that is interested to apply. It's going to be a paid position. And uh, it's it, uh, ba the ballot initiative was just passed. It'll be interesting to see uh, uh, the results and how things work out. Thank you. Any further comment? Mr. Clerk? Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate you allowing me time to speak. <clears throat> Excuse me. Believe it or not, um, we're already gearing up for the March 10th presidential primary election. I um, just want to make you aware that that election is coming up. Um, we're getting phone calls already. We do not have the applications yet. Um, the applications will be out. Um, I talked to the printer today sometime um, towards the end of this month. Um, I want to caution people that um, we do not automatically send out ballots. If you are on that permanent AV list, permanent absentee voter list, you get an application. Um, there's going to be many nuances in this election. Um, probably most notably, you will have to select a party to get a ballot. There will be uh, two different ballots, a Democratic ballot and a Republican ballot. Um, uh, so I just want to make people aware uh, of what's going on. That That's uh, a, a law made by our legislators, right, uh, Mr. Constant? Um, not the clerk's office. People get angry with us that I'm not telling you what party I want, but that's the law. Um, with with uh, that being said, please um, watch our website. I'm going to start um, delineating uh, many things that are um, going to happen with this March 10th election. And with that being said, I, I, I'm going to segue into, um, uh, we're going to need a lot of poll workers. It's going to be a busy year. Um, the presidential, we expect uh, hopefully a 70 plus percent turnout. I want to get eight poll workers at every poll. Um, um, please consider um, spreading the word and, and um, we need a lot of help, folks. It's like that all over uh, the state. Every clerk will tell you we're begging for help. So um, we've got a lot of department heads out there. we got council people with Are friends. we allowed to do that now? Yes. To work? Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. So um, please, before. please do that. And the last thing I'll say, thank you for allowing me some time. Um, and this leads into I want to congratulate the board on an excellent choice. Um, Dr. Yusuf. 
allowed me to have a, an hour of his valuable time here recently. And what we did talk about, and I'm sure you all know, and, and all, all our people at Watch Council know that we um, have a great partnership with the Crestwood Schools Honor Society in, in using the students and working the elections, and it's been going on for several years. And, and it's just a marvelous thing, and, and a part of our discussion was expanding that, and I thank you for for uh, the time that you gave me and, and the fruitful discussions that we had, and um, I, I look forward to working with you. And once again, congratulations. He's a great, great choice. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other comments from the table? At this time, I'd like to open it up to announcements regarding our community, and you have five minutes. I forgot one thing. Oh, Mr. Clerk has one more thing. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. Enjoy your day with your family, and, and have a great and safe and serene Thanksgiving. Thank you. Okay. You're up. Hello, Council Chair and Mayor. Just want to touch on a couple of upcoming programs. So first off, Wednesday, December 4th at 6.30 p.m. at Carolyn Candy Library, we will be presenting Sister Pie, a story of sweet success. Uh, join Lisa Lubinsky, author, <coughs> owner and head baker of Sister Pie, as she shares the story of her small but phenomenally successful bakery. Uh, and next, as Christmas nears, Santa Claus will once again be making a pre-holiday pit stop. Uh, he will be on hand for pictures and stories Wednesday, December 11th at 7 p.m. at Carolyn Kennedy Library and Monday, December 16th at 6.30 p.m. at John F. Kennedy Jr. Library. Uh, so come on out for some holiday cheer. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for your time and see you at the library. Thank, Thank you. you. Chief. Uh, good evening, Council. Good evening, Mayor. And also, I want to say Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And then I'm compelled to say Thanksgiving is also the number one time for cooking fires in the kitchen. So be very careful this Thanksgiving. Um, there are a lot, a lot of cooking fires. Mostly people are getting distracted. A lot of amateur cooks that day also. But mostly it's family around getting distracted. So just be extra, extra cautious. We don't want any fires on Thanksgiving. Um, but also, I'm here on behalf of the Goodfellows uh, on December 6th and 7th, that's fr uh, that'll be a Friday and a Saturday, we'll be out collecting um, for to make sure there's no kids without a Christmas. And this is the 91st year of Dearborn Heights Goodfellows. So it's a great organization with great traditions, uh, no child without a Christmas. Uh, and that night, the night of the 7th, there, there'll be a victory party at the Stitt Post. And uh, people are invited to come and we'll, we'll, find, we'll do our totals for the year and hand out the, the awards. And um, again, just a great cause. So we'll watch out for the people selling newspapers out on the corners those days. And, uh, be very generous and, and remember it's all for uh, for local kids for uh, that are less fortunate at Christmas time. Council Chair? Councilman Muscat? Uh, kind of piggyback a little bit on that but I want to ask uh, Chief Petrie uh, if we somehow can't make it Saturday for the purchasing of toys for the children can we donate money money ahead of time? Um, Corporal Hatton is in charge of that. I can get with her and come up with something if there's a... Uh... So Saturday is going to be a tough day, especially from 12 to 4, if you get my drift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big, big, big going on in Ann Arbor that day. <laughs> uh, that, I hate to say it, but uh, it is, so. Is it? <laughs> but I don't want to miss it, if I, but if I can donate something b beforehand, I'd like to. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like mentioning the other team. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank but you I'm very wearing much. the right colors, buddy. <clears throat> you mean the school okay. to the south? Yeah, you're wearing the right colors too, buddy. Go blue. Any more announcements? Go green, go blue. Director Haddad. Uh, good evening, Council Mayor. I uh, just wanted to let you know, um, as the mayor brought up at the last council meeting, uh, next week, next Tuesday, December 3rd, we will have our annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony. At, this year it's going to be at Warren Valley Golf Course. 6.30, uh, Crestwood uh, High School Jazz Band will be starting, and Santa will arrive uh, about 7, 7.05, um, in a very unique way, we'll just say that. Uh, I spoke with them earlier today because we have a, something in common, uh, so we're going to have some fun with some cookies and uh, face painting, uh, decorating, and uh, 
I so I have some uh, hot chocolate and some games outside. So I look forward to seeing everybody there, and uh, well, have a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public announcements? Director Hashem. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Madam Chair, Council Members, and the public. Um, quickly, uh, just for the public, I'm Director Hashem. I run the block grant for the City of Dearborn Heights. Even though we work for the city directly, we do receive our money from the federal government. Um, in the last couple of months, we have a lot of reporting to do. We have a lot of financial uh, reports that we have to send out. And uh, luckily, we did send them all in time. And I'd just like to read one paragraph that we received from them. Uh, basically, it says that the city of Dearborn Heights has met all the timel timeliness standard. Um, in addition, the city's single audit was submitted on a timely basis with no issues or conditions related to the CDBG funds uh, that were noted. Were noted. Uh, we have determined that Dearborn Heights has the capacity to administer and successfully met the federal requirement of the Community Development Block Grant. So I just want to thank basically this is not, I'm not tuning my horn, but I want to thank everybody that was involved with this. That would include the comptroller, Linda Vance, uh, include my coordinator who helped me out a lot on this thing, uh, a little bit of the administration as well. Um, <clears throat> so I want to thank you all for helping us out. And I'm going to ask my coordinator, Chris Klemchak, to come up and talk a little bit about the NOFA, which is the notice of funds availabil availability, uh, which I think we should you know, keep talking about because we have a deadline. Chris, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Mr. Mayor, Council, and members of the public. As Joe mentioned, uh, we are in our beginning stages of our NOFA, which is our Notice of Funding Availability for the upcoming 2020 CDBG program year. Um, that began early in November, and that's our normal cycle. We try to follow all the timely windows to ultimately get our grant application in on time every year. Um, hopefully, we've been hovering around the just over a million dollar mark uh, the past several years, so we're optimistic that that will hopefully be our, around what we are going to receive next year. Um, we are in the process now of accepting proposals uh, for that funding, and we urge uh, the public and uh, city officials, any entities out there, nonprofits, please, if you think you may be interested in applying for some of that money that we uh, get every year, uh, we are accepting those proposals right now. This is our window. It will go till January 16th of 2020. It's almost here, a new year, and uh, we'll be accepting those proposals for consideration. We do have to vet those out and, uh, you know, do go through that process. But now is the time, and it's all online. Uh, you can call our office. We will be happy to assist uh, nonprofits or other entities that may be interested in uh, walking through that process where our doors always open, and we're happy to do that. And like it says on our announcement, the final uh, word here is if you have any questions regarding this submission, please contact the Community and Economic Development Department well in advance of the deadline for assistance. Right now is that time well in advance. So again, we welcome anyone that may be interested. If you have any questions at all about, about the Black Grant Program, please don't hesitate to give uh, Director Hashem or myself and our staff a call. We'll be happy to assist you in any way we can. Thank you again. We look forward to another successful Community Development Block Grant year. Thank you. Thank you. And happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you for recognizing uh, the vets as well. Um, my dad was a World War II vet, so I appreciate and thank all the vets for their service at all times. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public announcements? Hi, uh, Madam Treasurer. Chair, uh, John Riley, Treasurer for the City of Dearborn Heights. Um, I've been uh, very humbled to serve the community for 26 years, but I'd like to put you on notice that I'll be retiring effective April 30th of 2020. Um, I'd like maybe the council to uh, let uh, Corporation Council give you uh, how the position will be filled after my retirement. 
and that you will need somebody, not just a figurehead, but somebody who's willing to roll up their sleeves and get into work and dig into the numbers. Um, I've done my best over the, that time, but uh, it's time for me to move on. So I really appreciate all the time and the support over the years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other That's announcements? Yeah. This is public announcement? Okay. Hi, Madam Chair, Mr. Mayor, Mike Doney with the District 7 Dads Club. I'm the active uh, treasurer. This is Shelly Gambino. She's the active uh, vice president. I just wanted to recognize Madam Chair and the rest of the council for everything you're doing for the District 7 Dads Club. And I have just a plaque for you here for you guys Thank for everything you. you've done and uh, everything you continue to do for us. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. As the superintendent said from Crestwood, you know, we're all a family here. Yes. We're all one city. With your support, we can help these kids learn new sports and have fun and just become a community. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Thank Thank you very you. much. Councilman Wenzel? I'd just like to say something about the Dads Club. Uh, thanks again for the members that came here. And uh, the Dads Club, we, we're, we're proud to support the Dads Club. It's, uh, it's been in existence uh, for nearly 70 years. Uh, it's probably the oldest nonprofit youth sports organization in the country. It's been going on for a long time. All the past members who founded it and kept it going, the new members, we to keep up the tradition. We gotta do everything we can to make that happen. Thanks, Dad's Club. This time, I think we're gonna open up the public one, comment. We got one one more, I believe. Oh, do we have any more public announcements? Did everybody have a five minute limit? Oh, Sorry. Diane, you flew in. Don't forget her. I know, I have three cities and two of them do their um, council meetings on the same nights. So I have to go to one and then come to the other one. So I'm sorry, marathon running. <clears throat> um, so first of all, I want to say, um, I want to, I'm gonna give you the bad news first. The County Commission Committee on Public Services voted unanimously to sell the Heinz Park property today. So it was very, uh, yeah, it killed me, but uh, you know, it's very short-sighted. It's the 100th birthday of the Wayne County Park System this year. And uh, that property that was given to us by the Ford Foundation was for park, park use, for public use. Public taxpayers have paid $257 million uh, over the last 25 years for the, the public accessibility of that parkland and now, uh, about six and a half acres and two of the mill sites have been sold to private developers. And um, it just gotta stop. I don't know, I don't know how you ask people to support something with their taxes and then sell it out from underneath them. To me, that's a, a blatant public betrayal. But um, I gotta tell you, Glenn Anderson fought with me and Tim Colleen fought with me. And uh, it's gonna come before the full board on December 5th over 200 people came to the meeting today. Uh, there's a handful of special interest people. I mean, the artists that work with Tony Rocco who wants to buy Wilcox Mill were there to support it. And um, the people, the preservation people were there. But we can preserve this and we could put anything we wanted to, to under a lease agreement. We don't have to sell it to repurpose it. Um, so anyways, we try to communicate that, but the people who were on the committee didn't even ask a question. It was just like, unbelievable. It was unbelievable, they didn't even ask a question. So evidently it was a done deal uh, before it all started, but I just wanna give kudos to, there's a lot of Dearborn Heights residents there that drove down there and made the meeting today. They fought for, for a Warren Valley golf course. Huge kudos to all of you for standing up and stopping that sale of Warren Valley golf course and stopping the flooding and the environmental disaster and keeping parkland in the public domain. You know, your leadership is commendable. I, I wish I surrounded myself with that uh, where I'm at, but you know, unless I can clone you and take you downtown with me. Uh, I, I don't have that for the majority down there. It's just, uh, 
there's just, I don't know, no commitment to that. So anyway, I think you guys did the right thing. I'm glad you did it. And um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. These are private businesses, and they have deed restrictions on them. But as soon as they sell them, the deed restrictions are gone. So they can sell them to anyone. One of them is going to do some retail space. They're going to put a distillery on uh, Newburgh and Heinz Drive, so it'll be a bar in the park. And then it'll be retail space, storefronts and stuff. And then the other one is going to be an art studio as long as the guy that bought it is alive and then after that I, I have no idea what it's going to be so anyway that's the bad news so now I'm going to give you good news okay so the good news is that we raked 1,250 bags of leaves for low-income senior citizens and disabled veterans um, for the 11th annual Make a Senior Smile Day and I want to thank you all for supporting it like you do thank you Thank you so much for, for doing that. It's a wonderful thing. We couldn't do it, Mayor, if you didn't let us have the Eaton Center as a staging thing. You didn't let Kristen come in. She's phenomenal. Some of the seniors down at the South End come in and help us every year, which is fantastic on their own time. Um, your former uh, police chief and your current fire chief come out with us all the time. Police and fire support this event. So give it up for the police and fire. Come out. And and help us all the time um, in your court actually um, picked up with your uh, community service folks a couple of them were you know some people that committed and then they had other obligations we had a few houses that they went back and got them so so Matt Lar Larabelle was uh, awesome to help us do that um, and then I want to thank the, um, the, the groups that came out from your community um, the Annapolis High School Key Club came out and helped us with their advisor, McKella Frost. The Dearborn Heights uh, Allen Park Hockey families came out, which was really cool with their kids. Um, the Junior National Honor Society from Robichaud's uh, junior advisor, Tanya Ray, came out with a couple of her kids. And the, uh, the MSU uh, Extension Master Gardeners came out, and your garbage hauler, GFL, sends us about 15 big, able-bodied guys that come out and do a lot of leaves for us every year, which is just super community giving back thing. So um, altogether, we were able to, we were 124 volunteers strong in my district, and we did 58 houses. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a happy Thanksgiving. Madam Chair, through, through the chair, thank you, Commissioner. You're the one that makes this happen. All the kudos should go to you. Okay, any other public announcements? Let's open it up to public comment. Come to the microphone, state your name, and you have three minutes. My name is Ed Frolic. I reside on Robindale Street. I want to congratulate all the council people for, on their election. And uh, I came here about the papers. I brought the papers. But uh, Councilman uh, Mascot addressed that issue, so I'll drop that issue. But I, I don't want to be charged this time here, but I want to tell you a little story, OK? And this might be, get your heart a little bit, OK? There was a little girl. She had uh, leukemia, and uh, her uh, parents were, uh, grandparents were doing a fundraiser for her, okay, to try to raise some money. And I heard this song at uh, St. Linus Polish Festival. Uh, it was a Polish band playing, and I put some of the words of mine in there, and I told the grandma, because the grandma knows my wife and me, to uh, sing this song to the girl, and uh, and for the little girl to sing that her too. Okay, when she goes to the hospital, now, I want you to hear, listen to this song. So let the sun shine in, shake hands with your neighbor, and happiness will never leave your heart. Thank God for this day. Say a prayer or two, and Jesus will be with you. And the little girl sang that. And this is the truth. The little girl went into a mission. The grandma comes in and uh, is crying to me and is thanking me. I said, don't thank me. 
Thank the one upstairs because he heard your prayers. That's the truth. And to Tom Winslow, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because you're standing up for the veterans. My father-in-law was a World War II veteran. He was in the North Beach Invasion. He received a Purple Heart. And it, 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 people like that, I take my hat off, okay? And but my other thing is, uh, there's a light out on Warren Avenue. I've been addressing that, but that somebody's going to get hurt. Now, since uh, Diane Webb is here, is that by, uh, run by Wayne County? Warren, uh, yeah, it's DTE's issue. Yeah. And I'm sure they, they, they've worked out, but if they need my help to get to DTE, I'm glad to help. Yeah, because it's been there for over five months like that down. That needs to be taken care of, okay? It's on Warren and Vermont. On Warren and Vermont. And what about the curbs? The curbs are so bad, there's community choice uh, credit union by uh, the funeral home there. Some, if in the winter time, if snow's covered, somebody's gonna go down there think, and fall down and, uh, and fall in the, in the road and somebody could get killed, okay? When you get done doing your public comments, you can come with me and I'll get your name and address and stuff and then your phone number and I'll give you Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, so. Okay. Anyone else? Public comment? Come to the microphone, please. Name and you ask for extra. Good evening. My name's Ed Jackson. I live around Kingsbury. A few things I'm going to bring up tonight. I know for the last couple of council meetings, there's been a lot of discussions about stop signs or about a Berwyn sweater being blown off and people driving like a bunch of maniacs. And a while back, I came up and I talked to the mayor and Lee Gavin about the barricade coming down right over here at the corner of the park. I was told the situation was going to be monitored. Two weeks ago, a stop sign popped up. Clear blue sky, nothing going on at all. So far, I've watched FedEx, UPS, the post office, the garbage people, and city vehicles blow by that. You might get one out of 10 people that are actually stopping at that sign. You should have either put a yield sign up or put the barricade back up. So I'm going, this kid's going to get hurt. I mean, say, do you recall that conversation, Mayor? Okay. Yep. All right. So just, I just, you asked me to let you know what it was. It's out of hand. No, give it to the clerk. And for the most people in the city, I'm sure know me as the, I don't know, I've been accused of being the crazy veterans advocate, but I don't really mind that title. Um, there's a few things I'd like to, to, to touch on here. We got the soldiers cross fixed a couple months ago. We got the area cleaned up by the memorial wall. I'd like to see a light, and I mentioned this before, a light put over that soldier's cross. For one thing, it's not only security for the statue, but it's also security walking up to City Hall. It's a very dark area. If you go out to right now, you have four big lights. Not one of them are on. <coughs> only the ones, in the little interior lights, are like things on top of City Hall. Uh, that should be lit up. I mean, there's no reason for that whatsoever. Um, the event at the Bellagio has been mentioned, and Commissioner Webb was there. Um, the, one of the biggest things that was mentioned was 1% of our population are, have been veterans at one time in their, their lives or whatnot. There's 83,000 veterans in, in Wayne County. It's a very small percentage of the population here. I don't know what we have here in Dearborn Heights. I'm, I'm going to find that out hopefully through the census. Uh, but this event that we had over here at the Bellagio, like Bill had mentioned, travels around through the county every year. It's put on by the county treasurer's office. Like we had office, we had representatives from Congressman Dingle, Tlaib, Williams, Ms. Webb was there, Warren Evans sent a rep, different people from the Veterans Court, Murray Davis was there, the Michigan's Veterans Foundation, Gift of Life, Tyrone Chapman from the Vet Center, Buddy to Buddy, the VA, and our two council members, Mr. Wunsell and Mr. Bozzi showed up. The thing that kind of disheartened me, and I understand everybody gets busy, I really, I really do. Um, this was a missed opportunity for our city to promote ourselves. It's not only being veteran friendly, but a very well attended. There was over 300 people at this event. What disheartened me a little bit, Mr. Mayor, I know you were busy with the police chief, but it was a missed opportunity. You're our leader. I look at you as our goodwill ambassador. I really wish you would have made an appearance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a missed opportunity big time. I don't see where this the city publicizes any of our veterans events. There's times that I feel like our population is being overlooked. I find it unnecessary. Like I say, I consider myself, like I say, I kind of take the title of being 
the lippy vet or whatever you want to have been called by a lot of different things by a lot of different people but if somebody doesn't get up and say something nothing's going to change I mean, it's nice that Tom will sit here and say everybody at the council meetings, will the vet stand up? That's wonderful. We've got stuff out here that's fantastic. It's not being publicized. It's not on the city website. You have a nice shot of City Hall if you look at it. Back the camera up a little bit. Put your memorials in there. Publicize the positives that the city has. I've mentioned before about a possibility, and this would be something for the mayor to consider, a veterans commission. Right now, there's no information going out veterans defense, fairs, information. Nothing goes out to the city whatsoever. There's, I don't see any reason for that. I feel that a Veterans Commission would be a good thing to put in place. If nothing else, the commission can take that responsibility to put that information out, be it the website coming here. There's times I feel like I'm the only one speaking up for this stuff. And while I know it's been gratifying to a few people, I cannot do everything on my own or expect to be the only person coming to these meetings so people can find out on TV. The website's out there. We put out a magazine, what, twice a year? Put some stuff in there. 1% of us do vote. We do care. The two events I'll bring up to you since I'm up here. On December 14th, it's Saturday at noon, it's St. Hedwig Cemetery and a Great Lakes Cemetery out in Holly. Reese Across America is going to be doing a program there. What that is, is they do their best to put a wreath on every military grave there is. I'm not sure how many are in St. Hedwig, but I've done the ones out in Great Lakes. And Great Lakes is I don't even want to take a wild guess at it. I mean, the place just keeps expanding. But these are programs that need to be attended. Need to be attended. Not necessarily, I'm not pointing any fingers at you folks by any means, but go out there, spend 10 minutes of your day. I realize Holly's a long time, but I also know for a fact that with 83,000 vets just in, in this county, a lot of you have friends, family, relatives out there, or people you went to school with. Show some respect this holiday season for them, please. I'd like to say something, yes. The Great Lakes, I've been to that one when they gave out the wreaths because that's where my dad is buried. And it's it's something to attend at least once. Just added 250 acres to it, it's going up at a rapid Just the energy that day when everybody's passing the wreaths out to the different graves, you just can't explain it. No, it's Any other public comments? Come to the microphone, you have three minutes. <clears throat> Good evening, Zuhair uh, I have uh, chosen randomly one form of an employee who applied for uh, four years credit toward the service. And uh, basically he's paying for it uh, on every two weeks, around $10. So it's going to take him 68 years to pay the rest. Uh, that's not the reason. I have a form here, and I like to read from it a statement from this form which he signed. I also understand and agree that any past, present, or future purchases crediting of service time shall not exceed a total of 48 months. If you all remember last year, I believe, there was a letter to extend the benefit from contract negotiation to allow the purchase of five more years. That was illegal because everyone, I went through every one of those people who bought, every one of them signed this form. If they bought 48 months, how could they buy five more years? In the future, if any negotiation happened, I like the city council, before you approve any purchase of any credit toward their service, to have somebody with a letter or with a report how much it's going to cost the city how much it's going to affect the taxpayers in the future if this happen, if we keep selling five years and three years and four years. This is going to affect the budget in the future in the millions of dollars, and I wish somebody will challenge me and tell me I am wrong. And thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? 
Move to adjourn. Do I, I, would, oh. I, was, I, I need to ask that. Oh, we have one more. Oh, well, I have one more, sorry. Good evening. Congratulations, Chief Petrie, but uh, I do have a few questions for him, if you would like to answer them for me, please. Okay. Would you like to? Yes, what? When any sort of resident calls the police department, 277-6770, pushing prime number three, dispatch or warrant confirmation, who answered that line? When you call the main line and you hit number three? Yes. Do we always have an officer available to answer that phone call? That's my knowledge. I don't call that line very often. Okay, could you double check if there's the number is always being answered? 911 calls are always answered. I can't say what specific line from the police department are always going to be answered. Okay, because unfortunately, when residents are calling that number, they're going to voicemails. Okay. So we don't know if any other situations happen. It did happen specifically with me five different times, so I had to use a different phone number for them to answer it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there any other public comment at this time? I'm, do I hear a motion to motion end to our meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.